Got the great Chaz uh, Palmentary. I say your name wrong every t- every time. I'm sorry for that, Chaz. But he's, you know, he's not a paisan, <laughs> so he doesn't know. That's all right. <laughs> but uh, we saw a Bronx Tale here in New York City Wednesday, Jimmy and I, and Chaz uh, walked in. I ran right up to him, shook his hand, and I just said, unbelievable performance. We were blown away. I want to say what I said to you personally. I, I never saw a standing ovation f- uh, happen faster in my life. I go to the theater every once in a while or whatever. But, you know, I, 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 I was saying sometimes you're in a theater and you're not sure if you should stand up for the performance and then maybe one person stands up and gets it going and then the momentum starts. Exactly, right. When that play ended on Wednesday, it wasn't even a question. Everyone just stood up at the same time and just gave you a standing ovation. And well, that had to feel good. It, it does feel it feels great. It feels great, OP. It, you know, it's been happening every night. So I'm real excited that the people are really responding this way. It it's, was- because it, it's an amazing thing to go up there by yourself for uh, over an hour and a half and uh, put on a performance like that. Uh, the, if the people don't appreciate that, they're crazy. That's why you get that standing ovation instantly. It's yeah. just an amazing thing. Yeah, it's just Chaz. It's, uh, the set is very, very simple. There's not much going on with this no, the, we didn't, the set. You got the street corner, you the got the stoop, corner. you got the bar, right. and that's about it. It's that's all, about it. It's all, all the rest is in my mind and in my imagination that I make the people see. That's what. That's the idea of that. The amazing thing is, though, if there's not one moment where you feel like you're watching somebody act, it was really depressing to watch. Like It was so <laughs> good. It was like, you, there's one scene where you point, like you're, you're saying, ah, this is where the... Uh, the, the candy store used to be or something right. like you're gesturing and it's just part of the stage curtain and you don't feel like somebody is gesturing to a stage curtain you feel like guys just walking you through his old neighborhood and I know if I did it I would be like and this is where the thing is <laughs> <laughs> it would just be awful and it was just amazing to watch a guy tell a story so seamlessly for an hour and a half it really was it was beautiful yeah well, and, I appreciate that and uh, one other thing before you get into the actual play uh, just before it started I, I ran up to where Jimmy was sitting I go they should have had a metal detector for this joint, man. A lot of wise guys coming out to see you there, Chad. I looked around. I didn't feel too comfortable. Certain clientele, maybe, that uh, enjoys uh, Yeah, there's a certain clientele work. that comes down and sees uh, some guys from my old neighborhood came to see the play, and it was pretty exciting. No, they really liked it. It's yeah. like the wedding in the original Godfather. They all just showed up. Like, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now, how did, how did this come about? Because obviously you, you did this before the movie, right. and then the movie was based on your one-man show. It was show. based on this play, yes. And uh, so how, how did this come about now to uh, come back and, and do it again? Well, I thought about doing it again. You know, I've been thinking about it for a long time. And then I, I said, you know what? I'm young enough to still do it because it is like a marathon. And I said, I think I should still do it, you know, because I really wanted to, the, the message that it gave the young kids, the young people about the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. And so many people have seen the movie and said, you know, I saw that film. It changed my life. Or, or a guy said, my, you know, my son saw the film. I, t- I took him to see it. And, you know, he was fooling around with drugs, but he realizes now he don't want to waste his life. So it really it had an impact on people, and I knew that the play even has a stronger impact when you see it in person. Mm-hmm. So I said, you know, I still want to. I want that message to get out there. I want to do it again, and what better place to do it on a world stage than on Broadway? And yeah, I decided to do it. And it's true that like uh, you, you it's, it's, it, people know it's the story of uh, Chaz and and, and uh, the gangster Sonny. Yes. And uh, De Niro, I think what it was this story is that he wanted to play uh, a Sonny, and you said no. No, no, no. That's not true. No, I know a lot of people have said that, but that's a, that's a misconception. Actually, when I did the play, everybody wanted to make the movie. It became the hottest property in L.A. since the, since Rocky, and every writer, director, producer wanted to you know to do it, but they didn't want me. They <laughs> wanted a star in that role, and so I said, "Look, I got two conditions: I play Sonny and I write the screenplay." And they said, "It's not going to happen." I mean, they offered me like two hundred fifty thousand, and I said no, and I I didn't have no money at the time. I said I didn't care. I said I play and I write it, and they said no. Uh, but in Hollywood, when you say no, it means, he really means he wants more money. You know, I, I, know what he, I know what he's saying. So then about a month later, they offered me half a million dollars. Doubled it. And again, I said, do I? And they said, no. I said, forget it. So uh, about I would say a few months later, I was with William Morris then. I signed with William Morris at the time. And they called me in and they offered me, um, I went in and I sat down and the guy put a piece of paper across the table and he <laughs> said, sign that piece of paper, you have a check for $1 million tomorrow. And I looked at him, I swear to God, and I said, is there a bathroom around here? And he said, what? I said, I, uh, is there a bathroom? He said, yeah, right over there. And I walked into the bathroom. I'll never forget it. I walked into the bathroom, and, and they were all waiting in the in the big conference room. And I looked in the mirror, and I, I had some water, put it on my face. I looked, and I went, nah. 
I really said something else. You know. That's not really what said. he really said. Um, uh, you know, I think they can figure it out. Yeah, out there. and I said, nah. Oh, I said, I'm playing it, and I'm gonna. And I walk back out, and I said, look, I'll sign that paper, but I write the screenplay, and I play Sonny. And they said, he just looked at me, said, this movie will never happen, Chaz. And I said, it, you probably won't with you, but it'll happen. And he said, why is that? I said, because it's too good. And I went back, and I started doing the play again, and then Robert De Niro saw it. And uh, he came backstage and said, look, I know the insanity that's going around in Hollywood that you want to play Sonny and you want to write the screenplay. I'll tell you my feelings. He says, I think you'll be great as Sonny and you should write the screenplay because it's about you. He goes, I'll play Lorenzo. I'll direct it. And if you shake my hand, that's the way it will be. Wow. I shook his hand and that's the way it was. It would have been funny if you made De Niro read for it. <laughs> oh, <please. laughs> you asked. Hey, you and Jimmy have someone in common, uh, De Niro. And the only reason I bring this up because it made the paper today uh, being you know turned down for a picture with De Niro made uh, the post today, by the way. Yeah, you I'm should not, tell Chaz to his face. I, I don't want to embarrass you. I, I'm just, I'm an, I, De Niro was very nice. He was nice about it. He was very pleasant, but I asked him for an autograph, and I, I just, a picture, I tapped his arm. I'm like, Bob. I told him Bob <laughs> that he would think I knew him. Because I'm like, he's so famous, he won't realize I'm a nobody. He'll think we did a gig together. And uh, he looked at me. I'm like, can I have a picture? And he goes, No. <laughs> oh, oh. Right, um, but he was very pleasant. He wasn't being a jerk. He's like, ah, if I take one, a lot of people will ask. I just want to go say hi to Billy because he was talking to Billy Crystal, and it was just, yeah. you know, it was we, just. We bring it up today because it made page six. Yeah, in the post. I told the story. No, <laughs> but, but, but Bob, <laughs> let me just want to embarrass Jimmy in front of us. He's a really great a great guy, but he is right about that. If yeah. you take one picture. Sure. Yeah. You're done. You're dead. That's it. So I do understand what well, he's saying. Well, I wanted saying. to tell him, look, I've talked to everyone. They won't bother you. They've elected me the lucky boy. <laughs> <laughs> lucky and obviously, boy. Dove Davidoff uh, is a buddy of mine, a very funny comic. Uh, he knows I know Dove well. very well. He's very funny. And, uh, you know, we did a chat. I remember we did a table read uh, a long time ago. Uh, it, was for the, it, was, it was for the 50s comedy. Uh, it was uh, with the guy from... Uh, Second City Second TV. City, that's right, yes. And uh, right. I, I, uh, oh, I love watching you stumble over trying to get Charles Palminteri to remember you. No, he you. doesn't remember no, I do remember. I was I so remember. bad, he blocked it out like a childhood episode. I don't, I don't blame him. <laughs> it's terrible. The play was good, but I was just like... Blah, blah, blah. He's like a... <laughs> was so nervous. <laughs> that, takes, uh, that takes a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, personal confidence to turn down that much money when you're, you're broke, when you're like you're saying, uh, to stick to what you believe in. Right. And, and I, I guess, obviously, you believed so much in this story yes. uh, to not take that money. I just believe that, because you know what it was? Everybody wanted to make it, Anthony. Everybody. I mean, it was like insane. And I knew sooner or later somebody would step up to the table. If you I know, if there's that notes. much of a frenzy right. over it, it's not just going to get not gonna brushed go under the carpet. I, I mean, right. there's always a chance, but you know what? I always believe in divine intervention, and I'm a very spiritual person. I just said, you know what? It'll be okay. I'm going to do this. I feel it, and I did it. How, and you how, can't picture anybody else in that role uh, but you. Well, you well, re you really can't. You know, whether you see the play or watch the movie, it's just that, that is you. Yes. That's your role. It was my role, yeah. and I knew that, and I said, this is my ticket. And, you know, mm -hmm. and then you know when I did that, and then Bullets, and then Usual Suspects, and then I never looked back after that. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun about Great watching movies. the play. It was it was so like when you act, there's certain things that like become embarrassing. Like because I'm so fear filled and just terror filled that I'm gonna be exposed for a fraud, and watching you do every bit of it without any shame and without any fear, like that was what was so great to You're watch. You're comparing yourself. To Chaz Palminteri. Well, I mean, men of similar ilk. Yeah. <laughs> similar ilk? <laughs> no, but just to what, watch... you both have feet. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I look at a stand-up comic and I go, oh my God, please, you know, that's like insane. That you is know? frightening. I mean, that's frightening. Yeah. I mean, I look at what you do and that's, to me, I go, oh, no way, you know. But you see, what I do is I get on stage and I hide behind characters and I just do all these characters, but that's a whole other thing that... Well, I, when you were playing the nine-year-old yeah, yeah. and talking to Sonny, I'm like, how is he doing this? And it was so believable. It was never, there was not one cheesy moment with like, you would play different guys and you never felt like he's, well, like, like Ope thinks he's not turning around and then turning around making another face at you. It was just like a flawless interaction between three, four people, a father, yeah. a son, and it was just, it was Dude. perfect, man. I, I, we, yeah. yeah, we were talking about Thank that. You. We just, we've been talking about it ever since we saw it. And yeah. 
there's a, a few scenes where you're, you're playing five or seven guys. I'm like, what? And, and you're not confused at all as, as the person in the theater. Well, you're just well, sitting I, there I, and you're following along very easily. I really had to, what happened was I really, I remember, you know, rehearsing that and I was, a, a, you know, I used to rehearse in the theater from 12 to 4 in the morning because that's the only time that was available. And I remember hours and hours of doing that, hours of just constantly because you had to be really clear mm -hmm. because like you said, you have to make people know who's talking at what time. So I would just constantly, and I was, I could couldn't get it and I kept trying then finally I found the rhythm and I, I got it and I just rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed I mean this is not you know I always tell people people kids come in and the actors come and they say how did you how did you write that and I go wait a minute look don't think I just sat down and wrote this mm -hmm. I wrote a 10 minute piece and then I did I performed it for my workshop I did a workshop and then I wrote more and out of that 10 minutes I took six out of another 20 minutes I wrote I took three and I kept mm -hmm. shaping it and shaping it till finally after almost a year I had 95 minutes of this show and a year of rehearsing it constant every day six days hours a week and said okay now I'm going to like try to explode with this thing so it was a lot of hard work involved here and in the in the movie people most people have seen the film and seen and seen and now we've seen the play you are uh, it's about part of it is where you, you meet a black girl and you guys right. like each other and it's a very weird time to be doing that and I had to ask whatever happened with her I mean that was like a big question I had after the film yeah the a lot of people have always said that to me Jimmy but no I I we just, you know, we were together for a few months, and then you're 16, 17, and then mm -hmm. it just kind of, when you're that age, you don't break up. It just goes away. Yeah, right? you move on to the next goes one. Away. Yeah, you just move on to the next <laughs> to one. To the next you know? uh, conquest. <laughs> After putting putting so much work into the, the play um, before the movie, because right. uh, you're saying, you know, it's six minutes here, and then you take ten minutes into uh, were you happy with the way the, the movie came out, with the direction oh, and the, God, yes, yeah, yeah. the casting and everything? I, I always said that. I was blessed to get Robert De Niro to, to do mm -hmm. this, because he was the perfect perfect director because he said to me i'll never forget it he says you know you can do this with a lot of people Chaz. he goes but if you make it with me i'll make it right and you know what he made it right and i wouldn't change a frame yeah he did a tremendous tremendous job that that's got to be great too uh, yeah. because i with all the passion you have for it uh, if if uh, the movie would have come out uh, and you oh, wouldn't have God, been happy yes, with it, I would know. Just no, been I was in such great hands with him. He was, yeah. the, you know, he was a director and he's such an artist. He's like the greatest uh, actor in my generation that I've ever seen, and a, and a great artist. I mean, director too. You know, he's just an incredible artist. Did it take a lot of work to uh, to do this again now after so many years of of not doing the play? Uh, did, did it did, did no, you fall you know, right back into I, it? I thought it would be scary but it kind of fell right back I mean I rehearsed it for so many years before I did it I kind of just started to come back I mean I needed a few weeks to get my chops back together sure. but, but once that happened it's flowing really great now do you mix it up from uh, night to night or is so, it all me memorized? It's all memorized, obviously. But there's times when I go in, and, and the, sometimes when I know cer certain wise guys around the audience that came to see it, I, I'll say their names. I'll say, <laughs> and all the big wise guys from all over the neighborhood were there. Joey G, and if I know they're out there, I go Bobby B, and, and they'll go, Oh man, <laughs> go, he put me in the play, man. He put me in there. Meanwhile, every night I'm saying different guys. You would think they would stand up and go, Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, yeah. they get a kick out. They of all it. love it, right? Oh hell oh, yeah, of course it. they do. It was yeah. really. It's really amazing, an amazing story. It's like uh, to me to be able to entertain a room full of wise guys, as well as like square guys like myself and old people, like to tell one story and have everybody captivated and everybody feeling emotion at the same moments and everybody laughing at the same moments. Cause you talk about stand up, there was some really funny lines in it, which right. were delivered perfectly, which annoyed me. I was like, ah, maybe he'll trip on the jokes. You know, that always made me feel a little bit better about myself. But every line was delivered. Perfectly. <laughs> He's such a bastard, man. <laughs> but it was just the jokes were great. I mean, where they were I, there, they belonged, and uh, that's what I liked about it, is everybody just loved it for the same reason. And I got to embarrass Jimmy. Uh, he had a tear in his eye, chest. Well, it was just watching it. He really did. So good at acting. Just to watch someone so good at it, it, it was just, you know, it was like uh, just really amazing to go with. Yeah. Well, well, I think with the piece, with which, which people are responding to, is it's it's really, I mean, the, the play is much, much funnier than the movie. It's very funny. Mm -hmm. But it's also, it, it has a, it's got a lot of heart, and you really feel it at the end. You know? I'm not going to yeah. give away the way the play is done, because even though it tells the same story as the movie, there's a couple of things that you don't see coming in the play. But uh, there's there's just one part that, that let's just say that the noise drops out of, right? And it gets quiet, and it's just it was beautiful. Oh, well, thanks a lot. I appreciate. That. Did you have any any uh, differences? Did you have feel you had to change uh, something from uh, before the movie 
till after the movie now that you're doing it because of the movie did you feel you well, had a change a, a few that's things? a very good question uh you know jerry Sachs is directing it you know jerry Sachs has been nominated for eight eight tonys one four of them a, a brilliant director and i was in such great hands with him in the play and i i have to bring him up because he really knows funny and what he did with and that's why this version of the play is actually better than the original version because he really was very seamless in his direction and having me really make changes changes and saying okay you know you could slow down here we don't have to go so fast trust it trust it jazz and his direction with the lights and paul gallo on the lights and uh, john gramada on the sound and music uh, he put a great team together and he knows funny certain directors know funny you know how that is jim you know either you know funny or you don't know funny this guy knows funny and he would say take a little more pause there it's funnier and i would take a pause there and sure enough boom hit the people laughing i go look at that you know, <laughs> you, know, he say, you, know you know that's just, that's funnier jazz you don't have to rush that and i would hold it back and yeah, it was funnier, you know. So, uh, you know, it's it's a teamwork. You know, I'm in great hands with guy, with people like that. So. It had a lot of callbacks in it too. I noticed, like the joke callbacks, which was just you know, like just explaining guys from the neighborhood, um, or you know, the guy Sonny constantly telling people to throw this guy in the bathroom, right. and it just was a great callback throughout the entire yeah. play. And yeah, and it got a laugh every time. Mush. Well, you know how it is. If it yeah. keeps getting a laugh, call it back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. call I, it back. I do believe me. And I'll do like eight more until it finally, like, yeah. once the laugh dies, I just keep going. <laughs> uh, now. Send a message. Yeah. Are you are you in, in your personal life and th throughout your career? Uh, how different are you from the character you portray? You're very intimidating, sort of a, a heavy uh, right. on screen uh, and and uh, on stage. Uh, is that you? Is no, it a part no. of you? It well, it's a part of me. It's a part of me. Yeah. I mean, I grew up with these guys. I mean, you know, and I always say Bronx Tale is not a documentary about my life, but there are some, a lot. I saw this killing when I was a nine-year-old boy, and, I, you know, my father was a bus driver. I had a relationship with a black girl, and some of my friends died, and I used to throw the dice for the wise guys in the hole. They used to call it the hole, uh, this place. And, um, you know, uh, in the Shade Joey was a bar that we hung out in. So a lot of these stories all happen, and I just kind of weave them together into this one story but you know I've had a, I grew up with wise guys I mean mm -hmm. uh, a, a great story is when I was on I, I was uh, understudying understudying a role on Broadway in 1982 and uh, finally the wise guys just they heard I was on Broadway so they came over to me and they said hey Chaz you know they said we heard you're uh, on Broadway you want to come and see it and I said well it, it, I said you, you really can't and they said why and I said well I, I'm an understudy he said, well, what's an understudy? I said, well, if something happens to oh, the lead no. guy. <laughs> oh, no. I know. I mean, I'm not realizing I'm saying this. Right? Yeah. I said, if something happens to the lead guy, then I go on. He goes, oh. Oh, <laughs> and, and that was it, right? So about 10 minutes later, I'm at the bar. And he walks over to me and he goes, hey, Chas, come here. And I go, yeah, what's up? He goes, you want to go on? <laughs> so I said, I, so I, I, I didn't get what he said. I said, excuse me? I said, what? He goes, you want to go on? You know, I said, what? He goes, you know, you want to go on? We'll take care of the thing. He goes, we'll make it look like a mugging. I said, no. <laughs> I said, oh, my make God, no. Look. He goes, no, we'll put him in a hospital one week, two weeks. I said, no weeks. <laughs> no weeks. Don't do this. I was so scared. Oh, and then finally, but you know, it was funny. So night, it was fu uh, that night when I... When I, you know, as an understudy, you watch the show from the back, and I'm watching the show, and I'm looking at this lead guy who had the lead part, and he was a real a hole, if you know what I mean. <laughs> sure. I'm looking at, him, I said, you don't know how close. You came. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, my no. life was in your hands, oh, said, or you the other way around. Was in my hands. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, they don't get it. These guys. Uh, we definitely have to take a break here. Uh, basically, oh, what we're trying to tell everybody is, a Bronx Tale is great on uh, Broadway. Oh, uh, yeah. thanks. I'd never seen a one man show before. I mean, I've seen a couple of plays, and just it, it was so much better than I ever would have thought a one man show could be. It was so good, man. And we want to get some of the younger people in there. Yeah. I, I, I felt really young in that theater on Wednesday. Oh, And I cool. really think the younger people should uh, try to make plans and see this play on yeah, Broadway. Yeah, because a lot of people think they're going to relate to it just because it's like from people who grew up in that era. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. From the right. 60s oh, A lot of people see it from all over the world, different countries, and they love it. So it's got universal themes. That's what's important. My girlfriend loved it, and she's a toxic... <laughs> <laughs> who loves nothing new. 
I mean, nothing, nothing old school. She likes all like new stuff, and uh, she loved it. And she had no. She's like, "What can you tell me about the story before we start?" I'm like, "Just watch it, and if there's anything you need me to right. explain." And, and she loved this, so it was oh, great. great. Thank hey, you know what else? Thanks for uh, thanks for not taking the money because listening to you tell that story. I mean, really, people aren't just clapping for your performance. You you took risk, and you know, in your line of work, in your business, everybody's faced with that kind of sure. call every day, and you took the risk. The and big decision, you, the crossroad. You know, right? Well, yeah. it was one of those times. You know, I just said, "Well, it's either now." That's why I went into the bathroom. I had to be alone for a while, and I said, "Nope." You know, and my father wrote on this card, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent, when I was nine years old, and he put it in my room. And I had that card with me in the bathroom, oh, and I just looked at it. Wow. I kept it all these years, and I looked at it, and I just put it back in my pocket, and I said, nah, not doing it. I went out, and I said, I said, I, I play it, and they said no, and I walked out. That was kept all those years for that I moment. I still have it, I yeah. gave, and I gave it to my son yeah. now. We really, wow. we really got to take a break. We got to take a break. Got to get the big point. All right. Yeah, from. absolutely. It's the Walter Kerr Theater here in New York City, uh, 48th Street between Broadway and 8th. Uh, tickets 212-239-6900. You're going to be doing this until February? February 10th. I'm, I'm here in February right. 10th. It's a limited run until February 10th. Very good. Uh, okay. It's Chaz, everyone. Chaz yeah. Palminteri. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. We'll be back with Mike Rowe from Dirty Time. <laughs>